welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to pray with you this morning. I want everybody who's coming in who is um commenting just right there, I will beg no more. Today, our theme is no more begging. I just woke up with that in my spirit, no more begging. There is a way that begging gets a person feeling which is not necessarily a good feeling. So today I want us to pray against the spirit of begging. So if you are commenting and you are preaching with me and you are praying actively with me, I want you to write no more begging, no more begging, no more begging. Today we come against the spirit of begging and we clearly sending a message out into the spirit realm and into the earth realm that no longer shall we beg. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody talk to me, talk to me. No more begging. Yes, we are right on the money. We are off the mark. No more begging. No more begging. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this meeting this morning. We thank you for everybody that has woken up. We thank you, Lord, for everybody that has showed up in this protocol breaking prayer platform, my God, who has said no more begging, who has said no longer shall they be beggars in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have come this morning to arise on this altar to say we are coming against the spirit of begging in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are the children of the most high. We are the children of royalty. We are kings and priests in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No longer shall we beg. Can you help me tell the neighbors who are coming in? No more begging once more. Hallelujah. No more begging. No more begging. No more begging. Hallelujah. What is begging really? Hallelujah. We are going to look at um, the definition of, of begging and what it is all about. But but one thing that I do know is that there's a way that begging makes you feel, right? Sometimes when you are even not begging verbally, but you are, uh, you know, you're just trying to, 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 to keep to yourself. You're trying to keep to your, your, your personal space. And, and you are lacking in something and somebody has that thing. You know, the Bible says to him who knows how to do good and does not do it actually commits sin. Hallelujah. Let me get my visuals going also on YouTube and Facebook so that you can see me. There is a way that begging makes you feel. Um, even when you're not verbally begging. You don't have to be verbally begging, but if somebody knows that you don't need something and they actually have that something, there are people who are actually destiny helpers who will help, help you about it. But there are people who are just, you know, in that mode of just making you feel, there's a feeling that you get that it doesn't sit very well in your tummy. So there is nothing as powerful as one being free to choose. One thing about life and one thing about us as human beings is that we we need that sense of freedom. We need to be free from choosing. We, 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 you know, we need to have the freedom of choice when you have options. I don't know if I'm communicating. We, we want to have options more so when you are a Christian, because people, um, sometimes often just put us in a category of people who are always begging, uh, you know, people who are always asking for things we are struggling or something like that. you right. So we, we, we need to have options. It's just an innate spirit, a human nature that, you know, you want to be free. You want to have options. Am I communicating to somebody this morning? I believe I'm talking to people who want to have options. You want to exercise your options. Talk to me, somebody. So there's a spirit that is called a spirit of a beggar. There's a spirit that is called a spirit of a beggar. And that is what I want us to deal with this morning, because that spirit can actually make you stagnant. Therefore, today, our quest or our cry this morning to our God is that God free us from the spirit of being a beggar. One way or the other, all of us have encountered that, 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 that sense, that feeling that man, I'm being made to be feeling like I'm a beggar here. You know, I may, I may not be at the same level as the other person, but it does not mean um, that you have to treat me like crap. You know, it does not mean that you have to treat me like, or make me feel like, you know, so I, I, there's not much I can, I can't even be, begin to describe it in words, but you know, when somebody knows that they're in a position of being in charge of something authority and they know that through, they are just not even saying a yes or doing what they are supposed to do. 
they have a way of making you feel like a beggar. So for those of you who are coming in, we are talking about uh, the spirit of begging. So uh, we are typing in the comment section, no more begging, no more begging. I will not be a beggar. And as I was explaining that begging is the act of requesting something from somebody when you are in need of that thing, right? You are in need of something and you're requesting it from somebody. You are in need of that thing. And um, we we need to know where begging actually comes from. Begging comes from lack. That means you don't have it. I wouldn't ask you if I didn't have it. Begging um, it can be uh, an attitude and also it can be a spirit upon somebody right it can it, it can also be an evil spirit that is placed upon a person um by 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 satanic agents because we cannot rule out that there's satanic manipulation that can make people have a spirit of begging you know there's there's actually people who who like just asking for things sometimes they don't even need the thing they're just always asking for things you know those people that always want to raid your wardrobe Come on, come on, somebody. Yes, Megan, I will not be a beggar in Jesus' name. Yes, I will not beg. I will not be a beggar. So there are some people who are genuinely without, and there are some people who just like adopting that spirit sometimes, I I, I would say. Um, and you cannot talk about begging if you don't talk about prosperity. And when you look at what prosperity is, prosperity is when um, a person, a man or a woman is prosperous, either financially or materially. All right. Or spiritually as well. OK, so prosperity is broad. OK, but when you possess good and great fortunes, if you look at the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse nine, the Bible says, I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people. And I will fulfill my covenant with you. So the scripture says, again, let me read it again. It says, I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you, right? So now we begin to understand when we see in scripture that it is the wishes of God that he desires for us to always prosper. And that is why in the third epistle of John, of, of, of St. John, he says to us, expressly, I desire above all things that you prosper and be in good health. So God does not want you begging. He wants you to move in a realm of prosperity where you are fulfilled. Okay. He's going to fulfill his covenant with you. His heart's desire is, is for that. You always live a life of favor. Your life must always be manifesting the greatness and the beauty of the sonship of Jesus Christ. He wants you to manifest the beauty of, of, of Jesus. So as children of God, we must always pray against the spirit of begging right? Whichever way it may come, whether it's coming from lack that has been generated by us or whether it's coming from lack that has been generated by satanic agents, we need to pray against the spirit of, of, of begging from actually even trying to actualize. It must never actualize in our lives or, or, or operate in, in we, we need to operate in the realm of having great fortunes. That is why we strive for success. Some people will say you are just being too much. Just accept your, your status quo. No, it's not a sin to desire more more, to desire to do better, to be desire to be more successful, to desire to add more value to people's life, to desire to expand wherever you are, right? So we must, we must make sure that at every moment, uh, we key ourselves into the blessings and the prosperity of God. God would not make blessings available. And he says, I'm loading you daily with benefits. He loads you daily with benefits for a reason. He wants your benefits to increase. He doesn't want you to stay at level A benefits. He wants you to go up the grades. So so you need to key yourselves into the blessings of God, into the pressing, uh, in, into the prosperity of God by doing what? By praying. You pray for prosperity equally as you are praying for prosperity. You are equally praying against the spirit of lack and spirit of what? Begging. So please type it one more time for me. No more begging. All right. So pro we, we need to, to activate the prayer of prosperity every moment in our life so we can disarm any plan of the enemy to make us lack or beg. And I know that a lot of people, when they hear pastors talk about praying for prosperity and, and, and they would want to discourage us for that. Why, why, why should I? Because there's this thought and mentality and this doctrine that they want to implement in our mindsets that when you're a Christian, you are humility means that you should not, be, you should be a beggar. You should, you should just be satisfied with the small things. It cannot be. It cannot be. I beg, I beg for your indulgence this morning. It cannot be. And we need to remove the mentality that even with our pastors, the people that God has put in leadership, there is nothing wrong with those people being in a, a position of prosperity or manifesting prosperity in their lives. You should actually celebrate. When you see somebody who has what you want, you should celebrate them. 
Don't put them down. What you don't celebrate, you don't attract. When you see somebody who's prospering in a specific area, or somebody who's rich, somebody who's driving a car that you actually desire, and you say, oh, look at these rich people. Who do they think they are? You are actually repelling that thing. You are the one who is repelling. You are attracting lack in your life. You will never uh, um, get the anointing that you speak against. When you are in your workplace, for example, you have bosses, right? You have supervisors. There is a structure, not only in the kingdom of heaven, but there's also a structure in the, in, 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 on earth, in our corporations, in our government, for a reason that we respect authority. God does not say disrespect authority. God does not teach us to speak bad against authority. Do you think you will ever be a CEO if you always say, oh, that's stupid man, that CEO is a stupid man, just because you did not get a raise last year, just because the CEO did not authorize a raise, and you want to join the band of people that are saying, he's a stupid man, he doesn't know what he's doing. The more you are saying the person is a stupid person, the more they are increasing the millions that they're earning every year. Am I communicating? Am I lying? Am I telling the truth? Am I not telling the truth? Yes, yes. So the more you keep on saying somebody is stupid, they don't know what they're doing, and then you, yet you see them, their life is changing again and again. So you want something, you celebrate it, you celebrate others. We don't all mushroom at the same time. Our blessings are not released at the same time. Okay? So you celebrate the level you are. You celebrate with others. Instead of putting them down, ask them, how are you achieving this? How are you? Teach me how to fish. Don't just give me the fish. Teach me how to fish. I had the most powerful story last night, and I think that's what provoked me, that there was a man who um, was a, an advocate, right? You know what an advocate, like a lawyer, right? Uh, and this man was a big shot lawyer in, in his hometown. And there was a junior lawyer who was now, uh, you know, who was looking at this man and was struggling and his law firm was, was struggling. And it's basically the illustration that I'm making, you can liken it to your business. Your business is struggling and you, you are in the same type of business. Maybe you are in a mobile, uh, mobile, why, why did I use an American term self? But you are in the car business, basically. You're selling cars. But let me come back to, 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 to the legal um, uh, scenario. Where this lawyer was saying, I'm struggling if I can just even get a quarter of the clients that this person has. And one day, they had the opportunity of being in a conference together, right? And he saw this man. And he decided that he was going to approach this man and ask him and tell him that he was struggling. This, this, thank you so much, Anna. Thank you for everybody who's gifting. God bless you and increase you. And this man decided to walk up to this advocate and he said, advocate, I need to speak to you. I'm struggling. I need to know. I need money. I'm, I, and every time this advocate kept on saying, keep quiet, I'm hearing you. Just walk with me. And this senior advocate kept on talking to him and asking him, how are your children? How is your family? And all this while, this person is thinking, I'm doing my one minute pitch here. I'm in an elevator with Saul Kesner. I'm in an elevator who's Bill Gates. In an, and you want to do your elevator pitch. And at that moment, all you want to do is to say, Mr. Bill Gates, just give me 1 million rand. All I want, even if you just give me 10,000 rand, it will set me up. And the whole time Bill Gates is saying to you, how is your children? How is your mother? How is your family? How is your ministry doing? And this is what this man was talking about. And this guy did not, he did not tell the guy, go away. He kept on walking with this guy in the conference. And this guy kept on saying, is this man crazy? This is my one moment to know what is the secret to his success. This is my one moment to get the money that I need to set up my business. And he said, and he walked with the person and they walked to the person. Or he says, follow me to my office. After the conference and when he got to the door, the, 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 the senior advocate looked at the junior advocate. He said, don't come back to my office until you have succeeded. Now get out of my face and come back to me when you have made it. This guy was confused, but he went away to think what was happening. And I, I'm praying to teach about this one day. Go deeper into it. There is a favor that you pray for. You've often heard me when I make declarations as well. 
You can have favor with God and you have favor with men. The favor with God that you pray for does not manifest except it manifests through men to men. God operates on this planet earth through mankind. Your favor does not translate until you have met your destiny helper. So that is why when other people are saying, there is no point in, pay, in praying for destiny helpers. You have got it wrong. Because you can pray and heaven has accepted your prayer point. Heaven has released your prayer point or your blessings or whatever you've asked for. God has given you the favor. The favor has been released. But that favor, I hope you are, you are following me this morning. It will only manifest if it manifests through a human being on this earth. It is going to be unlocked through a human being to you. So favor, when you pray for the favor, that is why you say, God, I decree and I declare, I have favor with God and I have favor with men because I know my favor has to be translated through a human being. Jesus had to come into the earth. He needed a body. He needed to be born of a woman. He needed to come into a womb. He needed to be conceived. He needed a woman to conceive him. Oh, Jesus, come on, talk to me. He needed, he needed, Jesus was not just going to show up and pop up. He was going to be scaring us. We were going to be overwhelmed. This is a ghost. He needed to be in human form. So the faith, so uh, to do his assignment, the favor you are looking for. When I'm saying to you, pray for your destiny helpers, activate your, 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 your ministering angels, your, your angels to go and do what they need to do. That thing will never come to you. I don't, I, 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 am I communicating? So you need favor with men. Your faith, some of you, your blessings have long been released, but because you were rude by error or you didn't know better, or maybe you have decided to adopt a personality of rudeness. Now you were, you, you were, you were mean to a person who was the one who was going to unlock your favor. That gate man, that security guard that you were mean, that you didn't think was worth you greeting was the one who was going to give you the access to the meeting you wanted to get to. Now that gate man has shown you that I'm going to delay you. I'm going to tell you to go park 17 kilometers down the road and you're going to have to walk. Jesus. God bless you, Nana. Now you, you, you are mean to people. You've got a mean personality and you think because of your qualifications, you have arrived. You think that that is what is going to open doors for you. No, you need a man. The favor of God operates through a man to get to you. That is why he says men shall give to your bosom as you give out. So be careful what you're dishing out. Don't attract the spirit of being a beggar. You are not supposed to get to a point of even lacking or even begging. And, and, and when that junior advocate got to a point and he sat down, because as he was walking back, this is what happened. He walks back into the conference room after the guy has gone into his office or his, 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 his parlor or his hotel room. Now people started running to him. Why? Because they saw him walking around with an influential man. What that guy did for that man was powerful. And they started saying, hey, I saw you talking to that guy. We've been trying to get a meeting with that guy for so many years. And we want, we want to broker a deal. And we've been talking to him, but his fees are so high. You know, it's, it's, we can't afford him. And the guy said, hang ten. I can do the job for you. And he now offered him his rate, which was lower. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, come on, guys. You need to be tapping on that screen. This guy started having so many customers. It was just a drop. People who could not afford the senior council could now afford the junior council. And why did they go to the junior council? Because they knew greatness cannot work, walk with people who are nobodies. That guy gave that guy an upper lift. It gave, he gave him an, a stepping stone to say, when people see you with me, they know that you know your story. They come because of the credibility. Do you understand that people want people, you can have all the value you want to add in your life, but you need somebody to release your credibility. 
There is that guy was just a destiny helper. He he just made sure he that guy follows him around in the conference. That guy was just talking to him. He's like, uh uh. That means you know important people. That means you know people who know things. That means you also know things. That means you can also help us. And that's how his practice started mushrooming and he started blossoming. Oh my God. Another person would have said, this person is treating me like a useless person. I'm not going to, I'm busy telling him I want this and he's busy telling me, asking me about my family. Favor. He did, thankfully, the wisdom of God crept in and said, you will not miss your opportunity. Not today. Not today. That, that, that receptionist that is asking you, how is your day today? And you're like, I don't, I don't have time. Is the CEO ready to see me? Please. I, I've got places to go. Please make sure that you, 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 you tell your CEO. That receptionist could be the decision maker in that establishment. You want to get in. That receptionist. So let's, let's be careful about our attitude. Oh, Jesus. So key into the blessings. Refuse the spirit of begging. We refuse to attract it by any means. We thank you, Lord, that you have favored us. We thank you, Lord, that men are favoring us. We thank you, Lord, that men that are supposed to favor us are going to locate us. Not only do we need to locate them, but we will treat them well when we meet them. Oh, I hope you caught that. If anybody caught that revelation, run with it. When I dropped off my daughter at university and I was like, oh my God. I said to her, we, I said, let's go and see where the dining hall is. Because I didn't want my child to be fed nonsense or whatever. We got there. We found one, one dude from Malawi. He was standing there. Just, you know, cleaning tables. I said, go and greet that man. I said, go and greet that man. Go and greet. I, may, I said, never forget, please, and thank you. No matter how much you think people are irresponsible in your life, no matter how you think that they have not reached the level of education you are at, go and make sure you look after, especially before you honor your lecturer self. Honor everybody. She knows that's what I taught her. But I said, make sure you honor the people that work at the ground level. There is no way she can fall to the ground. And when I left, I went to that man. I said, please look after my daughter. Do you understand? Do you understand how many wiles of the enemy are out there? There are people waiting to do harm. But I knew I, I, my, the protection is in place. There are people who have made it their problem to make sure that my daughter's health is okay. There are people at that school who are checking all the time. Hey, Knox, are you cool? Are you okay? How's your mom? Do you understand what I'm saying? There's no way she can be found stranded by, without transport in the street. And, and, and she might not even remember that this person is the person who's cleaning my dormitory. But th that person will say, no, I know you. I clean your room. Jesus, may favor not escape you in Jesus' name. May favor not escape you. May you not attract the spirit of begging erroneously. May you locate your, your, your destiny helpers and treat them well. May you, may you attract the spirit of favor faster. Be good to people. Give to people. Don't be jealous. Celebrate people. What's wrong with your pastor wearing a label? Celebrate them. Buy them a birthday gift. They are not only good for burials and marriages. They're not only good for you, for listening to you or when you need counseling. The same way when you remember Mother's Day, Father's Day, it is okay. Don't be misled by people who are saying, oh, you're worshiping a man. Don't worship a man, worship God. Hear me well, worship God, but make sure you honor your pastor. What am I teaching you? There is something called honor that unlocks favor. When you don't honor people, you, you, you lock your doors of favor. When you don't honor your pastor, you lock the doors of favor. That's the honest truth. That is the honest truth. Yes, there are false people. There are pe that is why the, the, the desperation, it is honor. Many pastors have actually left pastoring because it's not even just fatigue. It's not burnout. It's just that they, they, they were dishonored to an extent that it's just been, it's just too much. 
because they're the, you, you rank. You say, who is this one? This one is from the village. I asked a lot of people during COVID times, I said, do you remember where you come from? What about the pastor that raised you? The pastor that led you to Christ? Did you remember to go honor them? Did you remember whether their 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 children have food? Meanwhile, they are busy going up and down, bearing people during COVID times. Everybody needed a pastor during COVID times, and nobody wanted to touch them. Nobody wanted to touch anybody who died through COVID. We needed the pastors. When trouble hit, they needed the pastors. But when pastors even begin to talk about prosperity or giving, then everybody wants to teach them, treat them like they are repellent or something. They are mosquitoes. The devil is a liar. Honor. Honor the grace that God has put. Honor the people that God has put you to give you guidance and direction. Don't let them get to a point of begging and where they give up on, the, on their calling because and now they become what sorties. Exactly. The reason why you have false prophets is because some of them were genuinely called. That's the honest truth. They began well, but because they were reduced to beggars, now they became what? Thugs in the pulpit. They became thugs in the pulpit because they were now subjected to begging. Because people chose to forget the scriptures that say we must give, give us of offerings and tithes and all these things. There must be store in my there must be meat in my storehouse. We forgot that we need to take care of the widows and the poor. The community is full of widows and poor. And, and all of them, they come to ask at the church door. And the church, the pastor says, I don't have. We don't have. Because nobody gives. Oh, permit me. I, I don't want to sound controversial. I don't want to sound controversial. I don't want to make it even a racial issue. But, but Africans, we need to look at ourselves. What are we doing in terms of giving to the poor? I have, I have, I have seen churches which are historically full of West people from a Western origin. I'm not going to call the race. There's no struggle when they raise money. There is no struggle. They don't want to reduce anybody to begging. My cousin is a pastor in one of the churches opposite of my color. The, 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 more, the, the, the more of the congregation is the opposite of my color. They are not of African descent. And that church, if you are poor, if you are struggling, if you don't have groceries, you can go and, and meet the person who's in charge and say, this month I'm struggling. I cannot meet up with my rent and I don't know what to feed my children. And they are not going to run helter skelter and saying they don't have because why they have, they have reserves in their storehouse. Where did they get the reserves in their storehouse? Did they get sponsorships from overseas? No, they got it from their people who are members of that congregation who are tithers. Yes, they do get sponsorships as well, but they got it from when somebody is in trouble, when the sponsorships are not enough, they know that the, the person's soul group can come together. And she says, no, 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 Sissy. So he says, Mama Fortune, what we do, we, the cell group will look after. They, even the cell members don't even want to, they, they don't even have to know who are, we are raising money for. When we buy the groceries, the cell leader just tells us there's somebody amongst us who's got a need. But are we at that level? At an African level, we are more about ourselves. Oh, Jesus, I don't even know why I deviated from my notes from what I wanted to talk about. The truth is that many people who are even listening to me now, Tomorrow, if I don't broadcast again and you don't see me again, some people will not even miss me on this broadcast, on this platform. They won't. Because innately, inside them, in their depth of their depths, they are actually interested about their prayer point being met. That is why when some people come in here, they won't even greet. They won't do this instruction you give them. You say comment and do this. You say tap on the screen. You say share that. They don't. They just want their prayer point to be met. And once their prayer point that is met, they are gone. They they they. they People are just generally selfish. Deep down inside, they care about themselves. That is the truth. That is why my mentor in ministry taught me, he says, do not get your, let your head go big by the praises of men. Don't let the praises of men make you think. Somebody says, oh, pastor, you preach powerfully today. So next week, if, if I preach a, a, a more rebuking message, you're going to say I didn't preach powerfully. Must I now shrink because you didn't give me a compliment? Are you following what I'm saying? 
I cannot. I cannot rely. It's good. I'm glad when the word has blessed you. I'm glad to hear the testimony that what I preached has was a blessing to you. What I said to you was a blessing. Awesome. My God. But I'm not going to let my head swell. Because the same person who gave me a compliment yesterday will be the one who's left me. You will be on another broadcast. You would have left. Once your prayer point is met, you are gone. I'm expected. You, you expect your men and women of God to be sitting day in, day out, 24-7 listening. Do you know how many people are in the world? Do you know how many times, how many hours we have to pray? Do you know that some people, you can't even rush. If the pe person wants to tell you their problems and they take two hours. Now, let me ask you right now, count how many people are on each platform, on, on YouTube, Facebook, right? To, and on all these platforms I'm broadcasting on, 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 on TikTok. Guys, I love you very much, but rebuke is necessary. When the word of God, I don't know why the Holy Spirit led me this way, but there are things we need to get, get corrected. Now, if I have 80 people, that I have to consult with this week to deal with everything that is eating you up inside of you. Something is eating you inside. Exactly. Exactly, Prophet Casey. Exactly, my prophetess. 24-7, the WhatsApp is going. The, the phone is going. The inbox you have to answer. You still have to pray. You still have to wait on God to make sure that you are hearing well. Because I cannot prophesy, miss. I'm not going to come here and talk nonsense. And I still have to preach every single blessed day I'm on live. Not because I want your money. Not because I, I've not even asked you for anything. And, and I still have to look after my family. I still have to cook. And I've still got to deal with trolls that come on the broadcast with the audacity and say, when do you cook for your husband? When I, but because there is something inside of me, the compassion that Jesus has put inside of me that is crying to see the people of God be free. Do you know that I might not even have eaten? Not because I'm fasting, but because I'm saying for the sake of, of God's people, I will, I will go on this struggle with them and make sure that they get their breakthrough. So let's think. The favor of God works through a man to a man. Some of you who are here, I'm the breakthrough you are waiting. I'm the destiny helper. This word, these things that I'm saying to you are what you needed to unlock yourself. Somebody has been toiling. Somebody's in the village. Your pastor has been toiling in the village. Cannot afford to send their children to school. And you think it's okay. It's not okay. He doesn't have to wait until he tells you to give an offering. He doesn't have to. If you make him do that, then you make him attract a spirit of begging. And then he becomes what? A false prophet. He becomes a gangster in the pulpit. Ha! Huh. Empress, exactly. When do I cook for my husband? In the middle of cooking for my husband, in the, I'm supposed, I'm right there in my head, I'm thinking of all those prayer requests. And some people, if you know the genuineness of how some, not even some, the, the genuineness with which I come on this platform, to be sincere. I could be studying. I could be doing other things. But I come here, the burden. When I read your prayer point and I talk to you, some of you have already started speaking to you. I remember I will be sleeping and thinking, oh, Miss M, I, you know, I'm busy praying. So let me come back to my message. Oh, God, help me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, celebration. Thank you. Thank you for those that remember to pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, prophetess, you pray for your for other people while you are feeding your baby at the same time. You are multitasking. It's a job, guys. It's a job. It's not like God just suddenly drops things in our hands and, and, and somehow, you know, it's a job. We take it seriously. Some of us take it seriously, even though we know that people can leave. People can leave you any minute. People can forget you. So that's why we don't even wait. Some of them come back and testify and say thank you. Some of them say don't say thank you. So we, did, we don't even make it about payment. There are genuine ones. We don't even ask you for consultation fee. The least you could do is do the work. There is one guy that broke my heart. When I started the, 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 the Grace and, and Favor uh, broadcast in May, this guy said to me, I don't know where my money is going. I took my two hours of my Zoom time. I put on my coaching hat. 
not only my pastoral head. He told me about his business. I now began to analyze his business issues. Now, now I want you under, you to understand things that I went to school for. I now apply to this guy. He's getting a free consultation. He, he, I give him an assignment to go and execute and to report to me. He didn't come till this day. I'm still waiting beginning of May this year. He has not reported to me. Now I'm supposed to take, I'm, I'm supposed to take your, your, your prayer request seriously. That is why I'm not even quick to follow people back. Let me be honest, because I want to see your seriousness. How often are you going to come on this broadcast? How Do you take your own prayer point seriously, or you are just all about delegate, delegate, delegate? We refuse the spirit of begging. People will just throw you with prayers, their prayer requests, and then they go and sleep. Why? Me, I must lose sleep. When are you must sleep? No, let's change, guys. Let's change. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just correcting. This is where the Holy Spirit just took me. Uh, it's, it's just there. Yes, we are rebuking the spirit of begging. But if we are to attract favor, we need to understand the same favor we want from God is going to be translated through a human being on earth, on this planet earth, the same destiny helper. So you need to check yourself. Not only do you check what you're saying, you check how you treat people. You need to also give out favor, favor other people. You are also a destiny helper to other people. You might be my own destiny helper. Don't make as if you're not hearing God. You know, when God tells you, you need to bless this particular person. No more begging. Jesus Christ. Mm. How do we fight the spirit of begging? My Jesus. How, where are we? Oh, I'm left with 20 minutes, 19 minutes. Let's say it again. No more begging. I refuse the spirit of begging. Miss M, if you are to refuse the spirit of begging, make sure these things that I told you now, this is the Holy Spirit that spoke through me now, Mustru, right now, go and if you want favor, otherwise you can pray for favor until you are blue in the face. Favor works through a human being. God releases it, it's going to be manifested through a human being here on earth. No more begging. How do we fight the spirit of, of, of begging? We need faith. We must believe in God. Believe in the prayers that you do. Some people come and they pray, but they don't believe in the things that they are praying for. You are believing half and half. You are just saying, believe that God has done that thing before he even opening your mouth to pray. Before you open your mouth, believe that the thing that you're saying, that is why we can be on a prayer broadcast like this. And I will be spending 10, 15 minutes rebuking the spirit of hatred or rebuking the spirit and praying against uh, praying for financial breakthrough. And yet you will have somebody 20 minutes later and say, I need a financial breakthrough. Why? They did not want to stay when I was busy talking about scriptures, when I was busy teaching how you actually unlock your financial breakthrough. They just wanted me to prophesy it. And you think that is it? That you know, you don't have to work it? Kalaba Shotokodia. You need to believe it. You need to believe it. Some of these things, yes, there's, 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 there's people who are believing God for their healing and, 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 and I can prophesy healing on you and God does it for you immediately, instantly, because he wants you to know that he's God and he's able to do that, that suddenly in a flesh. But there are some people I can prophesy. There can be three people that are believing for the same healing. But the other one does not have, because the other one was doubtful. There was that element of doubt. And God does not do anything. Does it mean I lied? No, I did not lie. I just said what the word of God says. The rest is up to God. What God does is it's up to him. And the rest is also up to you. Did you really believe it? Or did you come chancing? You can't just enter. Okay, awesome. You came. Beautiful. I, I'm grateful. You came to the broadcast. And you just say, pray for me. I know you are tired. Yesterday we spoke, go and watch the, 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 the program of yesterday on YouTube. We, we, I know you are at rock bottom. I know you are desperate. But have, have, have the, at least the patience to just listen to a bit of teaching. How do I do this? Have the decency to say, let me learn. 
Let me be that, that junior advocate who followed that advocate around. Let me follow this woman. J let me just see what he, she's all about. There are people who have testified on this broadcast. Why? They followed me around. They went and implemented and they their goods were delivered. Don't you want to reach to that same place? Say it again. I refuse to beg in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need to understand and realize that our faith in God is compulsory. Your faith in God is required. It's compulsory in getting answers to your prayers. I refuse to beg in this earth. I refuse to beg. Hallelujah. He touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be so. According to your faith, YouTube, let it be so. According to your faith, not fortune's faith. According to your faith, Flacidic. According to your faith, Gundo, let it be so. If you don't have the faith for it, it ain't going to manifest. No matter how much you like my cute face, according to your faith, Megan, how do you unlock? How do you fight the spirit of begging? Through diligence. You need to be diligent. We need to be diligent. Diligence. Say it again. I refuse to beg. Jesus. We are always waiting for an opportunity one way or the other. One way or the other, we are all waiting for opportunity in our lives. We must know that our diligence is required in executing those opportunities. God will bring the opportunity, but your diligence is required in you executing. Opportunities, yes, you are not qualified. You get the position, but what's going to keep you there? What's going to maintain you there? Your diligence, diligence with your work. Diligence in your service to God. Don't be just diligent in other things, but when you get to the service in the house of God, you're not even serving God. When last did you even win a soul? Diligence in your studies. Do you think that the, the expert daughters, when you say the person is a specialist, how did they become a neurologist? How did they become a gynecologist or whatever the specialism they have? It's because they, they were diligent in their studies. It doesn't come by osmosis. It doesn't come by you sleeping with somebody who's got an A plus a, 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 a track record. You have to study yourself. That is how you fight the spirit of begging. Where is your diligence in your studies? It doesn't come by osmosis. It means you're going to have to burn the midnight oil. You're going to have to burn the candle and you're going to have to study. You're going to have to sit there. And some of you who think that you can close the door of serving God because in the name of your studies, you've got it wrong. That, that is why you need a balance all through. You balance your life. You still have time for your studies and you still have time to serve God. He is, after all, the source of all things. He's the one who will release those resources. He's the one that will help your mind to be calm when your brain, when you are sitting in that exam room and everything is looking like it's escaping your brain. Be diligent in your business. How are you approaching your business issues? This guy was telling about, he was not diligent about his financial management. He did not even know what record keeping is. You may have the favor and God has given you the talent and the gifts, but you don't know how to manage your business and your business keeps going down and down and down. Because you don't have the time. He, I, that guy even had the audacity. I sent him business books for free. Imagine all the copyright infringement that I committed. All the sins I committed that I had to pray for. I sent him MBA books for free. And saying, work this thing. Read this one. If you don't understand, come back to me for free. And then now you wonder why we want to charge for conferences. It's because people, when they get things for free, they don't use them. Ask any woman who knows that we've been struggling with weight. You go and, oh, here's a free diet, my friend. Here, You're not going to follow it. Forget it. Forget it. You're not going to follow it. But the one that you paid for, the one that you know you need to be accountable for, that is the one you will follow. Because you know, next week you have to meet that doctor. You have to be on that scale. Next week when you get on that scale, you know that it's your, I don't know whether you had paid $100 or $500 every month. You're going to have to honor what you paid for. People don't honor what they did not pay for. And that is why people start charging for things. So when people come to me, that's why I ask, even my friends, I know, are you here as a friend? You want a friend, you want pastor, or you want uh, my, my, my professional self, you want my business self. Which one are you approaching? So when they come to me, they will say, I, I need my pastor now. I need my pastor. I don't, I don't. I, and they know when I switch. I made up my mind. 
I don't, I, I, it's very difficult because when I, I, when you're a generous person, you're always wanting to give things for free. But I've decided when it comes to my mind and anything I went to school for, and I, I, I have the profession for, because I've seen that people can be lazy, unless you are truly, I know that you really don't have, I will, I will help you for free. That one I will still do because I will still sow seeds. But I've made up my mind that some things which are professional and business related, I need to charge. Even my family. I don't want to do business with my family. I don't want to. Because if it doesn't cost you anything, you will not honor it. You will not honor it. You will not work it. You won't work it. You won't mind when, when, when it disappears. No. Mm -mm. I refer my family members to somebody else. People who want things for free are the ones that call you the most. People who actually work and 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 who 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 understand the principles and the service of God, they don't call you as much. I I kid you not. I kid you not. Oh, kalabashata kadiebeshi. Let me help you. Oh Jesus, liberate us this morning. Liberate us this morning. That opportunity is going to come, but you need to be diligent. You need to be diligent in your work. You need to be diligent in your business. You need to be diligent in your profession. You need to be diligent in your ministry. Don't just remain at the same level. Desire bigger things. Even in your ministry, you understand that God has given us an assignment. He says, Go and make disciples, preach the gospel to all the four corners of the earth. How is it going to reach there? Did you ask yourself, minister, minister of the gospel, did you ask yourself, do you understand the reason why we are on the social platforms? It's not that we are bored. Some of us chose not to have physical ministries. I do both physical and online. How am I going to reach people at the four corners of the earth? Do you know how many nations are represented on these platforms? Do you know how many disciples I'm creating right now? Right now, you guys have a responsibility. Having heard the word of truth, having heard the true word, you have to go spread it. My next prayer is that you go and spread it. My God. Tell your neighbor, I will be diligent in the name of Jesus Christ. We must engage the power of diligence in every area of our life. If you want to be in the right position, you must exercise diligence. Recognize opportunities. Identify opportunities. Make productive, tangible use of opportunities through your diligence. That is how you repel begging. No more begging. No more begging. Oh, Jesus. Eight minutes to go. I'll be done soon by the grace of God. Oh, Jesus. Then you get to the dimension where you are always making positive declarations. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Watch what comes out of your mouth. As Christians, we know that we have power in our tongues. And the power of positive declarations, when you make those decrees and declarations, cannot be underestimated. How Apostle has been teaching the whole week about their creating realm of declarations and decrees. When you, you are just creating what God has already given it to you. God has already given, what you want is already on this earth. You are busy waiting for it to drop from heaven. It's already here on this earth. You need to create it with your mouth, with your declarations, with your positive declarations. Learn to declare positive words. Positive words will heal whatever is going through in your life. Hallelujah. Your environment will respond to the positive declarations that you are making every single morning here. It's not pop and flace. This is not kiddies. kiddies uh, this is not Cartoon Network. Waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning to be make, making sure that I'm here by 5 a.m. What am I doing two hours? I'm busy meditating and, and, and sitting and with the Holy Spirit and meditating that you guys get the breakthrough. I also want the breakthrough. When you get the breakthrough, I know I get the breakthrough as well. I know that when you are blessed, God will bless me. God will bless me through human beings that are on these platforms. Some of you will be the blessings that are in my life. I'm in full-time ministry, but I, I know if I, I know my assignment is to make sure that those that hear my voice must be blessed because God will use the people that he sends me to, that he sends me to pray for, to bless me. I also have responsibilities. Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I will be positive. I will make positive declarations. 
We must always declare positive words of healing. Declare positive words of healing. Don't declare the symptoms. Forget about the symptoms. Forget about the diagnosis. The next way you repel being a beggar, you need to serve God. Serving God is not an option. Stewardship to God is a very important aspect and it's very important in fighting away begging. If you want to win the war against the spirit of begging, you need to, if you want to fight the spirit of Marines, anything that you want to fight, you will need to serve God. You need to obtain the favor of God that equips you at the spiritual realm. You see, now when you, when you see numbers shrink, when you talk about stewardship to God, then they run. Not you people who are still here. Stay on, stay on. Don't worry. God's got your back. My God, it is written, worship the Lord, your God, and serve him only. Stop serving other gods. Don't make God compete for your attention and your worship. Worship your God only. Worship your God only. Worship your God only and serve him only. You can't, go so many people, you are serving this altar, that altar, that altar. And you expect results. The devil is a liar. Somebody say no more begging. How do I make sure that I fight the spirit of begging? Through prayer. People who wake up and come on this broadcast who are here at 5 a.m. and at 10 p.m. There are people who are serious and say, you know what, pastor, we are not going to be uh, oblivious to the fact that we are fighting things. Some of the things that we are fighting are spiritual and they are evil. And we need to be equipped. As children of God, the most important thing that we need is to obtain the favor of God and the favor of men. And we need to engage that in prayer. We need to release that in prayer. We need to always be praying for favor so we can be the beneficiaries of this favor. There are those things that he releases, those benefits he releases daily. It's standard for every Christian. But if you want to increase your A game, if you want to step up the game, you need to pray and activate the favor because you know there's always more. There is more, there is more, there's a potential of expansion, there's a potential of franchising, that is why he says be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth, you replenish the earth by replacing and giving others, the, you sell your intellectual property, you keep on growing, you keep on booming, don't be so myopic and just be like this, oh my God, let me close, my father, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege that you have given me this morning. Thank you for everybody who has arisen this morning. You have given the opportunity to be alive and to praise you and to worship you one more time. You have given them the opportunity to resist the spirit of begging. You have given them the opportunity to pray for favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you, Lord, because your book, the Psalm says that you have preserved our lives because we are innocent, Father God. Father, we humble ourselves and we come before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought your presence forever on, in, on this platform in Jesus' mighty name. My father, we thank you for you are great. You are enduring in your protection in our families in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your protection for us and our families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare it, Lord, for everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now. Lord, you are our shield. And Lord, we decree and we declare that your power is the saving power. We thank you, Lord, for giving us safety in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for continuously providing for us and supplying us everything that we need. Our households are supplied with everything that we need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father, we worship your name forever. We worship your loving kindness and we worship and we thank you for your favor upon our lives, your favor upon our destinies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, your word says that you are righteous in everything that you do and you are full of kindness. Let your kindness not escape us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we praise your holy name for your mighty hand on our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the miraculous deeds that you are doing for everybody who's at the sound of my voice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as you have parted the Red Sea for the Israelites, Father, part that Red Sea that, that somebody is facing right now. Somebody is being chased by the Egyptians. Their Egyptians may be financial. Their Egyptians may be the issues of health in their bodies, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Their issues may be drug addiction. Their issues, their Egyptians may be a, 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 a husband who is a drunkard or a wife who is a drunkard or, 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 or some whatever it is my God father may you part the Red Sea for them in the name of Jesus Christ father we ask you this morning wave your hand my God wave your hand like you waved it in the Euphrates River of God in the name of Jesus Christ send that mighty window God to divide it into seven streams so that it can be crossed 
Yes, those Egyptians you will not see anymore, Mamchester. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you concerning every beautiful plan that you have concerning our lives, concerning our careers, concerning our business, concerning our academics. We thank you for every beautiful plan that you have for our marriages, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the beautiful plans that you have for our families, for our ministries, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we stand on your word in Jeremiah 29 this morning, for you know, we know that you have the plans for us, and those plans, oh God, are good, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and we we stand on the word that says that those, those plans, my God, they are not for disaster, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, but you are going to give us a future and an expected hope, oh God. Father, help us not to lose the expectations for, oh God. We stand on your word, oh God, and we decree and we declare that our expectations shall not be cut off in this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your redemptive plan for us, for sending your son to die for our sins, oh God, because you loved us, oh God, that we may live, believe in your son, oh God, that we may believe in him, not only believing in him, that we may have life in abundance, oh God, that we make him king and ruler in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for, for forgiving us, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of forgiveness that even those who mock us, those who, who, who knew us before, oh God, they cannot accuse us anymore, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for having dealt with the accuser of the brethren, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that we have absolved all our sins that have been blotted out, oh God, by the blood of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that even the woman who was accused of adultery, oh God, her sins were forgiven. Lord, I speak to every single person who has been feeling guilty, oh God, has been moving around with feeling, feelings of guilt, oh God, thinking that they've done the worst, oh God. Father, thank you, Lord, that even them, they have been forgiven, oh God. Whatever the sin and then the magnitude thereof in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love for upon us and our households in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we lift up our family members right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue us all the days of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. As we continue to dwell in the house of the Lord, as we continue to show up and pray, oh God, and come on this altar, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we will continue to come and put our requests and our petitions, oh God. We will continuously come to decree and declare. Father, we worship you for guiding us into the into your presence, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we did not meet by chance. This is a divine appointment that is going to unlock doors of faith my God, thank you, Lord, that our spirit man is being revived in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for that your favor is going to begin to envelope us, oh God. It's going to overshadow us, us and our families, oh God. We are going to be enveloped by favor, the favor of God and the favor of men in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The same favor that found Noah, God. Let that same favor locate us in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, my God. Oh, somebody declare it one more time. No more begging. God, cause the door of great prosperity to be opened unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the door of prosperity, that, that great door of prosperity, open right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we have found prosperity in the sight of everyone, both young and older, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have found prosperity everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, the people will look at us and they will realize that we are not beggars anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Kalabas. The same way, God, that you were with Joseph in the prison, oh God, and you showed him your faithful love, oh God. God, make show us that same favor, oh God. Show us that same favor in our workplaces, anywhere we will go, any meetings we will step into, any meetings where we need to be, anywhere our applications or our documentation is being looked at for approvals, oh God. Show us that same favor you showed to Joseph in the name of Jesus Christ. My father, my father, as I pray, everybody at the sound of my voice, and they, as they resound that amen like thunder, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, right now, cause our destiny help us to remember us, cause our destiny help us to remember us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My father, I pray for every destiny helper to locate us in the name of Jesus Christ. Cause them to favor us. Let your destiny helper find you, locate you, and favor you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And when they see us, oh God, when they find us, oh God, let them favor us. When things go well, let us remember your God. Mention us to the pharaohs, oh God, of this world in the the name of Jesus Christ. Kala masoko di amashaka takaye. We will be let out of their place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kala basuto kodi aba.
cause your favor and prosperity to shine upon every single person that is on this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. These Egyptians will look favorably on us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said these Egyptians will look favorably upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will give you gifts. The people that actually hate you, they will be forced to, 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 to favor you. Even if they, help, they hate you, somebody will give them an instruction to give you gifts and to favor you in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not live empty-handed. Father God, everybody who has woken up and who has stayed through this broadcast, my God, may they not live empty-handed in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, make everything around them, O oh God, to work together for their good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let favor dispel any spirit of begging. I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. Flaxidus, let favor dispel any spirit of begging in the name of Jesus Christ. Mom Kathy, every spirit of begging is dispelled in the name of Jesus Christ. And we know that God causes everything to work together for good for them who love God, who are called according to his purposes for them. I decree and I declare that Alan Findy, you are called by the purposes of God and you shall be well, you shall be favored. Caroline, you shall be favored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Oh Lord, let your reign of favor fall on us. Let your reign of blessings fall on us. Let your reign of prosperity fall on us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy, I decree and I declare that prosperity shall fall on your career and your business. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree that the reign of favor shall fall upon your family. It shall fall upon your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that upon your ministry, there shall be a reign of blessings of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of begging is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree no more. These Egyptians, you will see no more. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land that he swore to your ancestors. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will give you blessings and numerous children and, and blessings. Your livestock will increase. The Lord will expand your territory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. You have opened the heavenly windows. The doors and the windows of heaven are open. Prosperity is overflowing in the name of Jesus Christ. Favor is locating every single single person on this broadcast. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Father, may you give us quick answers to our prayers. Let us not despair to get to the point where we are being withdrawn into a spirit of begging. In the name of Jesus Christ, and Lord, we are here this morning and we are agreeing and we are saying, indeed, we will do what we have. you have asked because you have looked favorably upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of begging loose your grip upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, arise in your power and dry up from the root uh, every demonic spirit of begging, uh, stopping our breakthroughs from favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every demonic spirit of begging uh, that is stopping your favor right now, it is uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, my God, you are a God that answers by fire. You are the consuming fire. Let every spirit of begging, uh, let every spirit that is blocking your prosperity and favor from reaching you right now, let it catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, my God, my God. As I pray this morning, my father, my father, cause your son of prosperity and favor to shine upon every one of us uh, and every one of our endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I remove every satanic embargo in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every satanic embargo of the spirit of begging, it is removed. Uh, whatever has been hindering you, it is removed uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, prosperity shall begin to reach you. I see prosperity knocking on the doors of your children and your families uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, my God, I uproot by fire any foundational stronghold of the spirit of begging, every fighting spirit of anything that has been saying I will not be able to fight the spirit of begging in the name of Jesus Christ. It is uprooted by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that is stopping our prosperity from reaching us, it is uprooted by fire. I uproot it by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare and I decree, this is your season of prosperity. This is the, your due season of favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, favor will not elude you in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, I declare that this is the time of celebration for everybody on TikTok, everybody on Facebook and YouTube listening to the sound of my voice. I decree that this is your time of celebration. 
celebration. People will gather to celebrate you. You will cause, you will call people for invitations. This year, you will also have a naming ceremony for your child. I decree and I declare that your womb is fruitful and you are not barren in the name of Jesus Christ. This is your season of celebration in June and beyond. You will celebrate in the name of Jesus Christ. Makoria Masonda, the Lord is going ahead of you. The Lord will compel everyone and everything to work together for your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the blessings of the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, I decree and I declare that favor and prosperity is your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ, favor and prosperity has been delivered to you. No more shall you beg. In the name of Jesus Christ, I dispel any spirit of begging. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, and the saints of God shouted amen. Make sure you, you, you thunder that amen well, and you decree and you text somebody and say, I'm not a beggar. I will not beg. I will not beg. No more begging in Jesus' mighty name. I want to thank everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you are tuned in at YouTube on Apostle Mara's channel. If you are going to watch the 11 o'clock service, make sure you are tuned in at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. So if you want to watch our, our Sunday service on the ground at Midran, make sure that you are tuned in. And remember, 30th of June, we are in the Four Ways area. Look out for the posters on the TikTok and also on the Facebook, all the advertisements. And if you are in the area, we, we would love to see you. We are going to have two hours non-stop prayer and the word and supernatural encounters will be happening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you guys on TikTok. You guys are always amazing as usual. I love you guys so much and thank you so much for taking responsibility for your spiritual growth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me just say and tune out, out of um, YouTube and Facebook. God bless you. I love you. Have a beautiful Sunday. Make sure you spend it with your family. Make sure you go, you spend it worshiping God and you also spend time with your family in Jesus' mighty name. See you tomorrow at 5 a.m. There is no 10 o'clock evening service tonight. There is only 5 a.m. tomorrow prayers. Okay, God bless you.